today we will learn about health and diseases we use the words health and disease many times health is the stage under which physical mental and social work can be done properly by proper capacity health is not just about getting rid of disease but is also associated with feeling good within having a mentally positive attitude not finding yourself under pressure in times of social difficulties etc a person's health depends on his physical environment economic condition and social equality physical environment various disasters like floods can have different consequences on health but the most important factor in this is pollution in our environment if the environment around us would be dirty and polluted we would feel disappointed in such a situation our minds could not remain happy and the chances of various diseases also increases and in such a situation we are not called healthy therefore social hygiene is essential for personal health for a good physical environment the clean environment proper disposal of waste and sewage and clean water is essential economic condition good food and clean water are necessary for good health to get good food good financial conditions is necessary and to be in good financial condition employment opportunities must be available social equality humans are a social animal they maintain interrelationships with each other if there is no equality in society then the behavior towards each other will not be good due to which problems like fear tribulation will increase in the society this will increase mental stress which is not good for health therefore it is necessary to have brotherhood and equality in the society if seen the cleanliness and social inequality of the physical environment are community problems personal health is possible only after removing these problems therefore community health is also essential for personal health now let's discuss the disease disease refers to disturbances in the normal state of the organism disease can be written as dis plus ease and from this we can take the meaning as lack of rest due to disease the functioning of any part of our body is interrupted since the functions of all the organs in our body are dependent on each other other functions of the body are also hindered this makes the person feel uncomfortable there can be various reasons for the disease such as lack of nutrients entrance of any harmful organisms like bacteria or viruses in the body and lack of public health services genetic defects such as sickle cell anemia etc if a person does not have any disease we call him disease free sometimes the condition of getting rid of disease is called good health but this is not true we will call a person disease free only when there is no discomfort in the functioning of one or more of his organs but a person can be said healthy when he feel physically mentally and socially good in this way every healthy person is disease free but every disease free person cannot be said healthy for example a disease free person may be unwell due to social and environmental factors
When there is a disease, there is a defect in the structure or function of one or several organs of the body due to which changes are seen in those organs like headache, cough, swelling, etc. These changes are called symptoms. A disease can be inferred from these symptoms. Different diseases may have similar symptoms. Such as headache can be in different diseases such as cold, brain inflammation that is meningitis. On seeing the symptoms, the doctors determine which disease sign the symptoms are. They may also conduct some tests in the laboratory to ensure the diagnosis of the disease. There can be many factors or causes of a disease. For example, a child suffers from diarrhea, then microorganism is the immediate cause. But many factors like genetic variation, nutritional deficiency, water pollution, poverty are its contributory causes. Immediate cause can be infectious which includes microorganisms or can be non-infectious which does not include microorganisms. In the next video, we will discuss this in detail. So today we have learned about health and diseases. Manifestation of disease Due to disease, we are not able to do our work properly. Can you tell us what is a disease? Disease is an abnormal condition that affects the function of some or all organs of an organism in a negative way. Let's understand it. We know that different tissues in our body combine and form different organ systems. For example, in the digestive system, the stomach and intestine performs the function of digestion. Similarly, alveoli in respiratory system exchange gases. In this way, in each organ system, a specific organ performs a specific function. But when there is a disease in the body, then one or several organ systems are unable to perform their function. Changes are seen in those organs like headache, dizziness, cough, swelling and many more. These changes are called symptoms. Suppose a person has a headache, then the doctor will know that he is suffering from a headache only when person will tell the doctor. Therefore, only patient can experience symptoms. The expression of symptoms of disease is called manifestation of disease. If someone has a headache, then it may be due to cold, stress, meningitis and many more. Therefore, from symptoms we get to know that there is a disease. But from symptoms we cannot know that it is which disease. Therefore, on the basis of symptoms, doctor looks at the signs of disease and identify the disease. Signs of disease such as swelling, fever can be identified by a doctor. To ensure the identification of disease, physicians can also do some laboratory test. Now, let us understand the organ and tissue specific manifestation in detail. We know that our body is much larger than that of microorganisms. Different microorganisms causing disease 
can enter the body by different modes and can live in the body. For example, bacteria that cause tuberculosis enters in the nose via air and grows inside lungs. And the bacteria that causes typhoid enters via mouth and grows in the intestine. Therefore, the microorganism will live or grow in which organ or tissue depends on from where the microorganism enters in the body. But this is not always the case. For example, HIV virus enters the body via sexual organs and grow inside white blood cells. Similarly, malaria causing protozoa enters through mosquito bite and lives in the liver and after that grows inside red blood cells. If microorganisms live in lungs, that is, lungs are the target, then the symptoms will be cold, difficulty in breathing, cough, etc. Similarly, if the liver is the target, then the symptom will be jaundice. When the target is the brain, then the symptom will be headache, dizziness, unconsciousness. Therefore, sign and symptoms of disease will depend on the organ or tissue which the microbe targets. That's why, on the basis of signs and symptoms, we can know which tissue is the target. The immune system in our body protects us from diseases. When an infection occurs, the immune system becomes active and forms various cells. These cells migrate to affected organs or tissue and kill microorganisms. This process is called inflammation. Due to inflammation, local effects such as swelling and pain and general effects such as fever occur. Therefore, infectious diseases have organ and tissue specific symptoms along with other common symptoms. HIV virus lives in the cells of the immune system and destroys them. Because of this, we cannot fight with small infections. In this situation, common cold and cough can cause pneumonia and intestinal infection can cause major diarrhea with blood. These other infections cause the death of the patient. In this way, in some diseases, tissue specificity of infection shows very general effects. We should keep in mind that when the number of microorganisms entering the body are less, then the manifestation of disease will be less. And if the number of microorganisms entering the body is large, then the disease can be severe and it can be life-threatening. Therefore, the severity of disease manifestation depends on the number of microbes in the body and the immune system present in the body determines the number of living microorganisms inside the body. So today we have learned about manifestation of disease. Today we will learn about types of diseases and its modes of spread. In the previous video, we learned that disease can be written as dis plus ease and from this we can take meaning as lack of rest. For example, cold and cough, elephantiasis and many more. We can divide diseases into different groups. One way of this is that 
we classify different diseases on the basis of duration of disease some diseases like cold cough typhoid occur suddenly and are of short duration such diseases are called acute diseases acute diseases do not harm our health much some diseases like tuberculosis elephantiasis develop after a long time and are of long duration or lifelong such diseases are called chronic diseases since the disease is for a long time that's why they cause specific harm to our health therefore the patient feels fatigue and his weight is reduced diseases can also be classified on the basis of their ability to spread let us understand this in the previous video we learned that the immediate cause of disease can be infectious which include microorganisms or can be non infectious which does not include microorganisms some diseases like cough and cold can spread in a community because its cause is microorganism that can spread from one body to other body by any medium such disease is called infectious disease for example diseases like cold and cough influenza aids and many more are caused due to virus typhoid cholera tuberculosis and many more are caused due to bacteria common skin disease such as ringworm is caused due to fungi malaria and kala azar are caused due to protozoa elephantiasis is caused by worms the microorganism that cause the disease is called a pathogen of that disease for example disease cholera is caused by pathogen vibrio cholerae and typhoid is caused by salmonella typhi disease which are not caused by microorganisms and their causes are different are called non infectious diseases these diseases do not spread in the community for example cancer is caused due to genetic abnormalities obesity and modern lifestyle now let us understand the modes of spread of disease in detail many microbial agents spread from one patient to another healthy person by different modes therefore infectious disease are also called communicable disease when a person sneezes or coughs some droplets come out of their mouth these droplets contain microorganisms in such a situation if any other person is near the patient then the droplets enter in his body in this way these microorganisms infect other healthy person microorganisms of some diseases are spread through air microorganisms that spread through air are called airborne microorganisms and the disease that spread through air are called airborne diseases so if person is suffering from airborne disease he should not go in crowded places similarly some diseases spread through water therefore these are called waterborne diseases if the excreta of a person suffering from cholera is mixed with drinking water and if the other person drinks contaminated water then the microorganism enters in the healthy person and he also suffers from the disease such diseases are caused due to unavailability of clean water some diseases transfers from one partner to another through sexual contact such diseases are called sexually transmitted diseases these diseases do not spread through casual physical contact aids also spread if blood of aids patient is transferred to a healthy person 
and a syringe applied to aids patient is applied to a healthy person therefore along with sexual contact aids also spread through blood to blood contact as well as aids also spreads during pregnancy from mother to baby and through breastfeeding some diseases are spread through other animals for example malaria elephantiasis and dengue fever is spread through mosquito bite and rabies is spread through dog bite thus these animals act as intermediates that's why these are called vectors in this way different diseases spread through different modes so today we have learned about types of diseases and its modes of spread spread today we will learn about the principles of treatment rahul is ill so rahul's mother asked him to rest after taking a rest rahul was feeling better than before can you tell why rahul felt better after resting for some time let us tell you resting conserves energy in the body this energy helps in making body free from disease that is healthy care taken to make the patient disease free is called treatment you must have experienced that some diseases like cold are cured without taking medicines but some diseases are cured only after taking medicines let us see how the use of medicines cures the disease there are two ways of treating infectious diseases using medicines the first way is to reduce the effect of the disease and the second is to eliminate the cause of the disease let us understand these in detail for the treatment of diseases like pain fever and diarrhea doctors give such medicines to the patient which reduce the effects that is symptoms of the disease also adequate rest also reduces some symptoms treatment that reduces the effects of the disease is called symptom based treatment symptom based treatment gives comfort to the patient but this treatment does not eliminate the cause of the disease that is infecting microorganisms therefore the disease does not cure completely to completely cure the disease it is necessary to kill infectious microorganisms therefore for treatment of some diseases such medicines are used which eliminates pathogens that is infectious microorganisms we know that the different microorganisms are classified into different groups body organization of organisms of different classes is different therefore their cellular structure is also different due to which in the organism of each class the chemical reactions that is essential biochemical life processes the stage of making new substances that are biosynthesis pathways and the respiration process is different therefore chemical reactions occurring in an organism of one class do not occur in the organisms of the other classes that's why treatment of the disease is done on the basis of the class of the causative pathogen for example the processes in the human cells 
and the processes in the bacteria are different. Therefore, to kill the infectious bacteria, such medicines are used that only blocks the synthesis pathway of bacteria, due to which bacteria cannot synthesize the necessary substance for life. Therefore, bacteria do not grow and die. For example, in the cells of humans, there is no cell wall. So, in humans, the process to synthesize the cell wall does not take place. And bacteria has cell wall. So, in bacteria, the process to synthesize the cell wall takes place. The medicine, penicillin, inhibits the process of cell wall synthesis due to which bacteria are unable to synthesize the cell wall and the cell wall become thin and they are killed easily. Essential process that occur in the bacteria do not occur in humans. So, medicines have no effect on humans because this medicine only prevents the essential process of bacteria, its effect will only on bacteria and not on other microorganisms. A medicine that inhibits bacterial growth or kills microorganisms is called antibacterial or antibiotic. Similarly, a medicine that inhibits the growth of virus or kills the virus is called antiviral. A medicine that inhibits the growth of fungi or kills the fungi is called antifungal and medicines that inhibit the growth of protozoa or kill protozoa are called antiprotozoal. Antiprotozoal medicines kill the malarial parasite protozoa Plasmodium vivax. Bacteria and protozoa are made up of single cell, so they have their own machinery to make their own essential chemical substances. In contrast, viruses are non-cellular organisms. Virus has only protein and DNA, that is, deoxyribonucleic acid, and virus do not have their own biochemical mechanism. Therefore, the virus is unable to make chemical substances such as proteins necessary for life. Viruses do not have their own biochemical mechanism. Therefore, they enter in the human body and use the human cellular machinery to make their essential chemical substances. Therefore, to kill the virus, there are less virus specific targets. This is why making antiviral drugs is harder than making antibacterial drugs. Despite this, medicines to control chickenpox, hepatitis B, and HIV infection have been manufactured. Treatment prevents progression and recurrence of disease. It reduces the mortality rate and improves the quality of life. However, we should take medicines as per doctor's advice and we should avoid self-medication. So today we have learned about the principle of treatment. learn about the principle of prevention of diseases. You must have heard that prevention of disease is better than cure. Do you know why it is said? Think, think. Let us tell you, this is said to be because there are three limitations to recover from any infectious disease. The first is that once someone has a disease, there is a lot of loss of their body functions due to which 
they are not fully recovered. Secondly, even if the treatment is proper, the patient may have to rest in bed for a long time. That means the treatment can take a long time. And third is, an infected person can become a source of spread of disease in other people. This increases the difficulty. Therefore, prevention of diseases is better than treatment. Now, let us see what is the principle of prevention of diseases. There are two methods of prevention of diseases, general and disease specific. The common method of preventing infection is to stay away from the patient. For example, one should stay in open spaces and away from crowded places to avoid microorganisms spread by air. Fresh water should be drunk to avoid microorganisms spreading by water. For this, measures are taken to kill the microorganisms present in the water. One must live in a clean environment to avoid vector-borne microorganisms. For example, mosquitoes do not breed in a clean environment. This reduces the chances of getting diseases which are spread by mosquitoes. Therefore, hygiene is essential to prevent infectious diseases. And infectious diseases can be prevented by public cleanliness methods. This reduces the infectious cause of diseases. You might have noticed that if one member of family has a cold, then other family members may also get a cold. But, in fact, not all members have a cold. Do you know the reason behind this? Think, think. Let us tell. Our body has an immune system which fights with microorganisms and protects the body. As soon as a microorganism enters our body, some cells become active. They kill the microorganisms so that we do not get a disease. Immune cells kill the disease causing microorganism before the infection spreads. Therefore, being infected with infectious disease does not mean that we have suffered a particular disease. But if one does not get enough food and nutrition, then there is deficiency of nutrients in the body, due to which the immune system does not succeed in killing disease causing microorganisms. And severe disease indicates failure of the immune system. That's why adequate food is the basic need to prevent infectious diseases. Now, let's talk about the specific method of prevention of infectious disease. The specific method of preventing infectious disease is vaccination. Vaccination is related to our immune system. Let's understand this in detail. The hundred years ago, smallpox was an epidemic. To prevent this disease, people do not go near the smallpox patient. But those who had suffered from the smallpox took care of the smallpox patients. These people had many smallpox spots on their body. These people did not suffer from the smallpox second time. That means, once you have smallpox, you will not get smallpox later. This is because when the pathogen first invades the immune system, the immune system then reacts to the pathogen and remembers the specific reaction. In this way, when such a microorganism or a similar microorganism enters in the body again, so the immune system destroys the microorganism with full energy. 
therefore the second infection ends more quickly than the first infection this is the basis of immune system on the basis of this rule of vaccine is manufactured when the vaccine is applied to a person this action is called vaccination vaccine contains inactive microorganisms therefore these do not cause disease by the entry of these inactive microorganisms the immune system becomes activated and protective cells are formed to kill the microorganism in this way the inactive microorganisms means vaccines prevent the infecting microorganism from causing the disease therefore in vaccination the immune system is made full by infecting with inactive microorganisms there are many vaccines available today that prevent disease tetanus diphtheria whooping cough smallpox polio and many more vaccines are available these are government health programs to protect children from infectious diseases these health programs should be available to all therefore for the prevention of any infectious disease everyone should practice public hygiene and vaccination so today we have learned about the principle of prevention of diseases Thank <laughs> you.